It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. It is yet another DJ roundtable, and we're finishing up with week number four with a guest here. And I have all the way from the great twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul in Minnesota. I happen to have Matt here, who is a karaoke, karaoke guru. Oh, karaoke, depending on which way you want to pronounce it. I see karaoke. He says karaoke. You know, tomato, tomato. It's all the same thing. It's all the fun. And all that's coming up here on the DJ Roundtable. But first, before we do that, first thing first, do me a favor. If you're watching this live on Twitch, thank you so much for coming in and watching us live. We are live on Twitch on Tuesday nights. So that way we do a live chat. And you can ask your questions right here. And if you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor. Make sure you click the like button. Follow the channel. Subscribe. And make sure your bell icon is on. So that way you know when we drop this, usually Mondays at noon, you know that the new episode's coming out. And usually I try and drop it, you know, uh, before that. But you get the, uh, you at least know when it's going to come along live. Just in case something should happen. Weekends are busy. You know, we are working DJs, so sometimes on Saturday or Sunday, when I get to it, I try to edit and try and get it out for you guys. Uh, as always, it is springtime here in Chicago, and uh, I'm doing a lovely uh, allergy. So if you hear me coughing, I do apologize in advance. Uh, it's always a fun time with this. Um, And I want to thank all you out there, as well as all of our DJs here tonight. We have everyone here except for basically two uh, we're missing, uh, but that's okay. I was hoping Tommy be here because I happen to have uh, from a local restaurant, Tommy's. Uh, there they are. I have a drink from them. Uh, they have multiple locations here in Chicagoland. Not as big as Portillo's, <coughs> but they're another multi-location uh, hot dog stand here in Chicago. Anyways, uh, well, thank you all with it. And then uh, Matt from Minnesota, So because we, we have two Matts here, I'll make sure I don't call on Matt all the time. He thinks I'm calling him. <laughs> <laughs> we have our regular Matt, which is our normal Matt, DJ Salsis from beautiful Orange County. But we have Matt here from the Twin Cities up there in Minnesota. Lamb of a Thousand Eggs or a Thousand Lakes, whichever way you look at it, because you were walking a lot there with the beautiful scenery. And also, they're kind of right next to Canada, so sometimes some of the northern people in northern Minnesota sound they're Canadians and Canucks, and they may act like it a little <laughs> bit too, with them, especially the snowshoes. But uh, <laughs> Matt, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming in here tonight and sharing some of your expertise. And if you want to tell everyone about your business, about your uh, DJ service, and about how you do karaoke, and how you were on a certain TV show... As a contestant, I was not on a TV show. I auditioned as a oh as audition. A I'm sorry, auditioned. Okay, yeah, uh, actually, two of them. I've uh, auditioned for both uh, America's Got Talent and The Voice. Both of them, uh, actually, uh, three times for AGT and twice for The Voice, and never got past the uh, initial audition. So, but I never made it to the TV level. Unfortunately. Well, hopefully, maybe that so, will change and not do this in the future. So you want to explain to everyone about your DJ service and also about how you do karaoke and uh, a little bit about everything you do up there in the great state of uh, Minnesota. I could try. Um, let me start way back from when I first started out. This is your elevator pitch, sir. Like, so go ahead and say, okay. say whatever you want to say. You know, just <laughs> well, keep it keep it like five minutes or less, so everybody doesn't fall. Sure. <laughs> okay. Long story short, uh, let's see. 1987, I graduated from high school. Uh, 88, I started DJ and started doing weddings. I was working for uh, a multi-op, uh, just getting my feet wet and whatnot. 
uh, doing the wedding thing as a as a DJ. I hadn't even, uh, I mean, karaoke wasn't even a thing yet. Uh, so I did that for probably about a year or two. Got tired of uh, hauling around all the equipment. You know, I have to go to the warehouse, pick up all the gear, go to the venue and and set it all up, do the gig and tear it all down, bring it all back and uh, getting paid peanuts for all that, you know. Um, so I, you know, figured, well, maybe it's uh, maybe I'm better off just uh, doing the bar thing. And uh, so I had uh, uh, DJ as a house DJ for uh, Champs Americana. Uh, for about uh, eight years. Um, also worked for a cattle company for a while as a as a DJ as well. Stuart Anderson's. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. Um, and then and I took a break from the whole DJ and thing and worked for a car dealership actually for a while as a runner. And then uh, during that time, you know, I was a I was a karaoke singer. Just going around to uh, other people's shows and stuff, um, and uh, one of the hosts that I used to visit uh, a lot, you know, he says, "Well, you're you're a DJ at one time too, weren't you?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah." He says, "Well, why don't you get into this?" You know, and it's uh, you know, you can combine the two. It's a, uh, you know, you can combine the the DJ and the and the karaoke, the singing, whatever, and and best of both worlds, you know. I was a little nervous about it at, the, at first or whatever, but then, uh, you know, he showed me the board and everything and, and got me all trained in on that and, and whatnot. And and uh, so then I started uh, getting my feet wet, working for another guy, doing the karaoke thing. I did that, that for a couple of years. And then myself and two other guys, uh, we started a partnership which didn't really work out. That lasted about maybe a year or two. Um, and I broke off on my own and have been on my own ever since. I'm a single op guy. I do uh, private parties and, and weddings when I get them. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just doing uh, karaoke shows and bars uh, about three times a week. And then when you do a karaoke at a bar um, and you have these contracts, these are weekly contracts. So you're back to the same bar Again and again, or you do a uh, each track at different yeah, bars. So it's like a res residency. So and I play the same places on the same night every week. And then uh do you look for additional bars as you're out there? Do you go into places and say, you know, see other DJs doing karaoke and like I know it, you know, not sound bad. I know I'm doing a better job than this guy's doing or this girl's doing. So do you approach the bar manager and say, Hey, uh, I do karaoke and I give bigger crowd than this or i do this differently do you ever do that to get more business or you're happier your business level right now honestly uh frowned upon uh in on the on the karaoke end of the world um uh, you know that that kind of it i guess basically i guess is referred to as poaching in a way like if you go to somebody else's gig and and uh you know go up to a manager and give me your card and, you know, that kind of thing. I, that's frowned upon. So we don't really do that. Um, so I try to find places that don't have it already and try to give them my pitch that way. So, Add it to the repertoire to increase sales and increase people coming in. Correct. Yeah. And then when you do karaoke on you know, the nights that you do it on, uh, how many people go through your, karaoke or how many people do you actually attract to that bar or restaurant or wherever you're yeah, at? How many do I get in a rotation and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, it depends on the place. It depends on the night. Um, but but uh, my nights right now are, are every Thursday, every other Friday, and then every Saturday. Um, my Thursday show will probably get about uh, 25 to 30 singers a week. Uh, that Friday gig that I do that one depends on the week, but, uh, you know, now that it's getting warmer out, people are finding other stuff to do outside and whatnot on the weekends. I haven't like, I guess they've been having bonfires and stuff like that lately. So it's kind of been a little bit slower, um, on the nights that I'm there, but, uh, this past Friday was really good. We had an 80th birthday party there and in a packed room. So, um, so I think I had about 35 
five singers on Friday, this past Friday. Um, my Saturday gig, uh, that one is more of a DJ night than a, than a karaoke show. I mean, I do have the karaoke stuff set up, um, but I don't really get the singers down there as much. So pretty much just doing the uh, the uh, the DJ thing gives okay. me an opportunity to break away from the karaoke part of the stuff and uh, and do some beat mixing and stuff like that. So, yeah. We were kind of quiet on this last Saturday because uh, Kenny Chesney was playing at the U.S. Bank Stadium. And then we had a uh, big rock concert with Stained at the XL. So, um, so, yeah, between those two big shows, there was really nobody there on Saturday. It was pretty quiet. You're you're in uh you're in St. Paul more or in, or in Minneapolis more? Which which side are you on? Right on the edge, really. Uh, I'm con it's considered Minneapolis where I am. I'm in Coon Rapids, which is on the north end of town, north end of the metro area. Uh, but uh, you can go, you know, about maybe what, maybe five or ten miles to the east, and you're in St. Paul. So I'm pretty much right on the right on the edge of both. So you can't get much more in the middle than there, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're basically down to the difference between the two counties, you know, Ramsey County and Hennepin County. And, you know, depending which way the wind blows, you're probably in both that night. <laughs> yeah. So that That's one of the big things here, especially, you know, again, I know there's a lot of DJs out there who have karaoke in their, uh, in their uh, system. And not everyone uses it. I, I don't do karaoke because one, I can't sing. And two, I do weddings and karaoke's and weddings. I have ne I personally I've never seen one that's very successful at it, uh, because I feel it ste steals from the couple. Because then you got people, you know, karaoke singers, and you can you deal with it all the time. Especially you get someone who's a very powerful, very good singer. You want the spotlight on them at a wedding. It's not about the guests; it's about the bride and groom. So it, it's one of the things that I feel that karaoke is great for parties great in an atmosphere for bars yeah. and restaurants and stuff like that. People can go to have fun, have drinks, have some chicken wings or wherever else they want to eat and enjoy themselves with their friends at a party. Um, even at, you know, somewhere else, you know, a, a sporting event or at, outside, outside of a theater or something like that, you know, depending on, you know, where you're, you have a license and you have your gig at, um, it's just one of the things that, you know, I never seen a wedding go over good with karaoke. What has been your experience? Have you done karaoke at a wedding? And if so, what has been your experience? Yeah, I have. And we did it at uh, mine, actually, um, back in 2008. And, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't good. Um, it did. It, uh, yeah, you don't want a wedding reception to turn into a karaoke show. You just don't, you know, so, uh, yeah. It, it, you wouldn't recommend just, it. Okay. No. I was making sure I'm the same, where I'm, I'm on the same page. <laughs> You're the expert yeah, yeah. if I have you coming here tonight. So let, let's go to some of the other DJs here that, uh, again, a lot of DJs here, they do multiple events. Uh, myself, I'm just, I just do weddings, but like, you know, I have some uh, DJs here who do uh, school dances as well as, uh, you know, uh, a couple of DJs who do uh, bars. I have a couple of DJs who do um, corporate events. So we have a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Dixon there in the beautiful state of Ohio. Um, Cause I know he does different things and is a music teacher by trade during the daytime. That's his daytime gig. And he teaches, you know, grade school kids uh, about the loveliness about music. But I know he plays some instruments. And we were talking about this off uh, off camera a little bit. But uh, maybe we should start a band because we have enough people in here to play uh, instruments to to do it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dixon, uh, you I'll be the question. lead singer if you want. There, there you go. You can, yeah, I can't sing, so I can, that's got to be great. Uh, Mr. Dixon, <laughs> what about you, sir? Uh, you have any questions here for uh, Matt from good old uh, Minneapolis? Um, what kind of software do you uh, recommend? Because I sometimes I have Terrafund. That's my main go to because I can just um, it's cheaper. And then I, the library seems to be um, uh, you have more options. Do you prefer karaoke? I mean, Carafun, I have, I think it's Larynx. It's another one I tried out. 
Then I also tried doing it, um, downloading a bunch of stuff, but it was it was hard to keep up with the requests. I ended up still like doing a YouTube thing or nowadays with the stems, just using the um, original track and, you know, taking the vocals out and the person using their phone. So what do you um use? Hmm. Well, I've never used Carafun. Um, and I'm, I happen to shows that, that do use that. And I am under the assumption that uh, it, all of the tracks on that are all karaoke version or KV. Is that my, am I right on that? Yep. Okay. They're, so they're I've, I've been doing this since, been doing this since 2004. Um, and uh, been collecting music uh, for quite a while. So I've got a pretty decent library myself. Uh, when you use the software like uh, Carafun, you're limited to that particular brand of karaoke tracks. So you don't have like you know like if you know karaoke singers uh, tend to you know there's some that are like sound choice nuts. Uh, some like DK and some like Chartbuster and. And there's just all kinds of different brands out there of karaoke uh, discs. Um, I don't know if you can still buy them or not. Uh, you probably can on eBay or something, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, um, but yeah, when you're using Carafun, that's, uh, you're, you're limiting yourself. You, uh, and then that uh, it's a kind of a turnoff to uh, a lot of singers, I think. Uh, but I'll say, I, I, I take the, I think... I don't think there's a better karaoke out there than Carafun. I think it is by far the best option out there for like it's modern, it's fresh, it's easy. There's a QR code. You don't need a songbook. Uh, they update the ca the catalog daily. It seems like there's always new stuff. Um, I've used it. I do karaoke maybe once every couple months for corporate and other things. And okay. uh, I just, I mean. I tried two other options and they were absolutely garbage. Um, so Carafun somehow I stumbled. I think one of them was, I don't know. One of them was like a saw. It's just Carafun is so easy and you can just like let it run. People can request themselves. Like they can add to the queue. It's easy to manage. And like people are always like, oh my God, you can just scan the code. They're always like looking for a songbook or asking me for a song. And I'm just like, go to the screen, scan the code and, and go for it. Um, there are like, some songs that Carafun doesn't have. Um, it has, I, I would say it's like 98, 98, 99% it has what people are looking for, but there's always like one or two that you're just like, it's not in here. But they yeah, do there, have, there's no library in the world that has every single song. Right, right. Of, and licensing they do though, somewhere. Carafun themselves has like 58 or 59,000 songs. And then you can, if you're online, you can actually go into their like, partners and find other stuff that's like music choice or whatever that like has other karaoke versions doesn't look as nice and cute as Kara Fun's fun fonts do but you can't use them um no you can you can still play them yeah i yeah. when i host karaoke at the two places i do in town here uh Kara Fun has been the go-to app for god yeah. almost 10 years for both the venues yeah wow. so i'm curious like you know what like software you have that that's uh, I mean, I you know I'm fresh into the karaoke scene, so Carafun was just I stumbled across it five years yeah. ago and never looked back. And I only do like the I pay for a month at a time whenever I have an event for it because you can just cancel otherwise. Um, but well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, with Carafun, it is all online. You're streaming, correct? So you have yeah. To be... So what you do what you what you can do is um, so it's yeah it's online based, but if you pay for so you can always, what I do is if somebody requests a song, there's enough buffer room to where I can download it locally. And every time you download it, it stays in your library. If you pay for the enterprise version, you can download their entire library. So you have it offline. Um, and then you could run the whole thing offline, even with the QR code. Um, so it's kind of like that. That's like a hundred or 150 a month or something like that. I think the $10 a month version, like uh you can still download but you can't like download an entire catalog you, you can get, go in there and download what you, you think like 200 songs I so basically it's like a karaoke it's, it's a karaoke version of like a beat source pretty much yeah. okay and they have what's nice is 
they have songs in other languages too because i did an event for colgate toothpaste company and it was their whole corporate mixer where they had people from all over the world coming and so people were singing in italian and mandarin and uh, i think there was even some i don't even know i think there were some japanese songs i don't know it was all over the place and it had every single french too and it had like all these songs that i'm like i wouldn't even know how to type this in but they found it So, They have Filipino and Thai stuff on Kara Fun yeah, too. it's it's amazing. So I'm I'm curious how, uh, not to poo poo on anybody else's software. I'm just curious how how yours is, and and it sounds like you you have Yeah, I master I didn't collection. know I didn't know that you could do all that with that. Um, Yeah, <laughs> it's I it's used kind of software. I use CompuHost. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and that costs like uh, I think it's about three hundred dollars to buy the program. Just like uh, like if you were to buy the license to. like the infinity license for virtual DJ. Gotcha. Um, but then it's yours. Um, and all my, you know, I index all my songs into that and it, uh, it keeps the rotation. Um, does care fun do that as well? Like Yeah, you the can. singers are listed and you can move them up and down Yep. and, Yeah, you can organize the queue. You can bump people from it. Um, they can also, you can enable certain features when they add to the queue, whether it prompts for their name, whether they have to put a picture. Um, you can allow them to change the key, I think, of the song too. Um, I was just going to ask about that. And then with with Carefun, you can also, as they're singing, you can add in backing vocals if they suck. Um, And Oh. it's it's pretty it's pretty nice. It doesn't sound like a corny karaoke type. So are the key changes uh, on CompuHost, uh, one step down would be Elim on Carefun, or is it is it a is it a half step or is it a full step or? That's a great question. I usually I think don't it's, if I'm not mistaken, Carefun is a half step per click down. Okay. Cool. If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, the only downside is you do have to, if you want to get rid of the Carafun logo on the bottom, um, you have to pay for the Enterprise version or whatever their top one is. But Okay. again, you know, do people really, I've done Yeah. in corporate events with it and nobody's like, what's Carafun? <laughs> There It's just is fun an karaoke. app that's connected to the CompuHost. Uh, it's called Songbooks Online. Mm hmm Um, so you know, people just go into their uh, their Play Store on their phone or whatever, and and download the app, and then they can put in my show ID that connects them to me. And then they can search the, search the whole library right there on their phone, and so it's it's kind of similar to the Carafun, but there's no QR code on the screen or whatever. That I would I would love to see that something like that uh, in the future with that with that app. And that's one of the things, you know, So. you want ease of use for any software you, uh, for DJing, karaoke or anything, you know, and again, we have half people here use virtual DJ, half people here use, you know, um, uh, record box and we have people, uh, you know, I'm not half, but like a third, a third, a third, you know, we have, you know, uh, Serato, record box and virtual DJ. And the thing is that everyone, you know, once you find software you like, That's the important thing, but there's differences and understanding the difference between the two. One does this, but doesn't do that. The other one does that and doesn't do this. That's where you kind of find what you like to have, what you like to work with. And sometimes, you know, you're used to a certain software or like, oh, I didn't know the software did this and that. It's a learning experience for everyone. And that's why when you talk to other DJs, you know, again, I have two DJs here um, that are Serato and I have a DJ here who's Recordbox and I have other DJs here are virtual DJ. And it's interesting how they do stuff and they know the software, but it's also interesting how that software handles a problem differently than like, again, I do virtual DJ. So it's interesting to hear that and like, oh, they have a fix for that versus virtual DJ does not. And it also gives you a chance to go back to that carrier, that company that makes the software and say, hey, If so so is doing this, why aren't you doing it? And a lot of times they want that feedback, so it's a great thing. I know, uh, Dwayne, you had one more question, it looked like. Yeah, I was just curious, uh, like, what does this, like, setup look like? Is it, um, like, with the TV screen? And do you do, like, a, I guess, a combo of, like, a DJ or a regular DJ setup, you know, with your, like, your DJing, but then you just bring a TV screen or something that for the karaoke, or do you have a separate karaoke setup altogether? Um, my whole setup is a uh, is generally a karaoke setup. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, basically I guess you'd say it's like a combo setup, really. 
um, because uh, um, I do. Um, okay, <laughs> let me start from the beginning here. Okay, so I've got two uh, QSC twelve point twos, no subwoofers, um, and then I've got a, a Kroki monitor stand. Put the monitor on that, uh, and then as far as what I run my sound through, I've got a Flex Ten. So that into an external mixer, uh, touch touch mix uh, eight, uh, QSC touch mix eight. So I plug in it run run out of the uh, out of the controller and into an external mixer, and uh, I've got three mics. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. And so what is it like your what yeah. is like a typical like karaoke um i guess night what, what, like how would you um set that up like do you just do karaoke and then just sing the whole night or do you like have certain times throughout the night that they do karaoke and then you might just play music in between yeah my shows are 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 generally known as karaoke shows. I'm generally known as a karaoke guy. I've been I've been a karaoke guy in Twin City since uh, 2004. So when people come to my shows, they know that it's a, a karaoke show. Um, uh, as far as when I'm running the show, I do uh, play bumper music. In, I call it bumper music, um, like DJ music in between singers to keep the energy level up, but just just long enough so that the, until the uh, the next singer gets up there and then they start their song. So it's only like maybe 30 seconds to a minute of a DJ song before the next singer starts their their song. If that makes any sense. Yep. Hopefully it helps you out, Mr. Dixon, because uh again, I know a lot of guys here and girls here do uh uh karaoke. Again, I don't, but uh it's interesting the questions, especially stuff. Uh I did had we did karaoke, uh, and I say we because my wife's also part of the business too. Uh back uh, in 2009, 10, I still got the stuff in it in the garage. I actually have a American, uh, no, uh, Newmark CD, uh, player that does the, uh, text for karaoke and I still have the CD. So if you want to have something from vintage 2009, a Newmark, uh, CD player, Newmark mixer, I think I've used it like three times. It's all in a case, all locked up. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to get rid of that for cheap. <laughs> I even put a little LCD, uh, like a four inch screen on, uh, on, on it. So I could see what's going out for video. So I have a video screen so I could see what the people are seeing out there on uh the uh, cd player so it, it's one of the things that's uh nice to have so uh taylor and jordan you look like you had a question uh do you have software do you do karaoke if so are you one of the people who use in the same software as they do or what do you guys do uh, we use carafun but it's kind of the same reason that like what matt said uh we don't do it enough where we really ever looked I and it's pretty easy to set that up and run it um but i did kind of a question so when you do karaoke how long are you doing it for like is it three hours four hours like how do you my shows um, yeah generally four hours okay i have a uh my saturday show uh you know like i said that that's uh seems to be more of a dj thing than it is a karaoke show uh, but that, I guess that's kind of what the bar wants in, in a way. Um, I don't really get the singers down there like I like I do at my other gigs. But uh, um, that one is like four and a half to five hours, depend you know depending on the night. So if it's a if it's a slow night, then we cut it at one. If it's a if it's a busy night, then we stay to, stay open till two. That that sounds so, about right to what we do. Um, like I said, we don't do it too much, and typically. We are playing music in between because sometimes we don't have a singer for 10 minutes. It's not really consistent always. Um, we did do a corporate event, though. It was a biz or a Christmas party, um, and everyone had to sing to get their bonus, is what the owner said. And by the end of the night, I believed that because everybody sang. <laughs> but I'll give it to the accounting yeah. department for singing tequila. And like they knocked four people out of the way with like three words. So 
that was pretty brilliant of them. <laughs> <laughs> what I, I, that's what I tell everybody. That's one of the easiest songs in the whole book. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. You, got, you got you got to get a cowbell and this hat. You just say more cowbell every so often and bang a cowbell <laughs> in the background. Now, <laughs> speaking of which, I also do uh, add in some some sound effects here and there. Uh, you know, like funny stuff. You know, like I've got one that's uh, Austin Powers. It's like yeah, baby, and stuff like that. Whatever, and and I do have the cowbell one from Saturday Night Live and and, and some other stuff. You know, that it, it 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 just makes it more fun. I will not to jump on the care fun train like we just did, but um, I do like the feature where you can change the pitch and slow it down because I've had to slow it down at least 10% for some of those drunk people because they can just not keep up. They pick the fastest song that they couldn't do sober and it's just like keep slowing it and slowing it and slowing it down. They're like, did you change the tempo of that? No. You're just <laughs> Sometimes it... Uh... Little tricks like that it helps out, uh, you know. And speaking of uh, someone who uh, I, I wish you were a lot closer, Matt, because I would come on Saturday night. I wasn't had a gig and, and pick up uh, DJ Brentley up there and uh, up there in beautiful Lacrosse and uh, have him escape for a little bit and come up there to Minnesota. But unfortunately, you're you're I'm only you're not about six hours from you. Yeah, you're not in the right corner, but. My uh my one of my best friends, which has been on the show before, uh Darren, he's a Vikings fan. So he him and his wife go up there when the Vikings and um, uh Bears play. His wife, um, great young lady, uh, she's a Bears fan like myself, and uh they go up there to go see uh the Bears versus uh the Vikings and they drive, you know, they drive up there and they stay overnight. That would be something that uh maybe in the not too distant future gives me a reason to go to lacrosse have uh some lunch with uh Brentley and uh come up there and visit you and then maybe come back you know swing back with uh with my boss the wife that's on a Saturday we are open which uh right now with everything it's uh always crazy busy uh really quick before getting further have a couple of, uh comments in the chat uh first thing first Adrian E uh welcome 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 the other thing is that uh uh Kevin which is uh new Picard uh Asked, does anyone do trivia? Does anyone here do trivia? If so, raise your hand. Oh, we do have a trivia person here. So uh, I guess uh, Kevin's going to ask a couple of questions for some trivia stuff. He wants to get, I know he wants to get into it. Oh, there goes my light. Uh, he wants to get into it. Um, and he may have some questions. Um, and also I may uh, say, hey, uh, you know, have him bug you and see what you do with that. So I want to go over to Jeff in beautiful North Carolina because he hasn't said anything yet tonight. But I want to see, uh, Jeff, you have any questions for karaoke? Is this something you do? Is this something that you do for uh, corporate events or or for anything? Or is it something you just don't want to play with? I've uh, done karaoke twice. Uh, I don't really have a you know major setup. It's just um, it works convenient for me with um, – having, you know, the video display on the front of my DJ booth. Um, so I've uh, got about 200, 250 songs that I've downloaded and, and collected over the years. And it's just the, your basics, you know, the, the, the top, you know, 200 uh, request. So, uh, you know, I did, the latest one I did was um, about a year ago uh, for, a group of Sweet 16, and they wanted to do karaoke. So I downloaded a bunch of Taylor Swift, which uh, basically that's that's the majority of what they sing, and uh, that that kept them pleased. So, um, so oh, yeah, that, it's it's very rare that I, I do karaoke, but, um, yeah, it's uh, – it's there, and it's great that virtual DJ yeah, can uh, can handle it without any you know extra software. Um, so it works for for me in a pinch. Um, I wouldn't want to you know probably do that uh, nightly like Matthew's doing, I guess uh, you know with that software. But it works for the amount I, I use it. And that's that's one of the things again, like like yourself, Jeff. I'm a virtual DJ guy, and I know it has the option to do it. Just that, uh, you know, I just don't. I choose not to to, to use it. <laughs> um, and again, it, it's one of the things that this is this is this is a thought for you guys out there. 
watching and listening here of the show is if you want to add this on here, and I'm going to put Matt's link down below. I'll put his social media down below. You always contact him uh, if you ask want more questions uh, that you have. Um, you want to ask like how to start, how to approach, how to ask people. You know, if you're like area, you know, places in your area that you want to talk to uh, for stuff, I'm sure Matt can help you out with that a little bit. He's a great guy. I got to get to know him in other uh, circles and other chats. And it, it, he's a fun guy to hang around with. We uh, we joke around a lot, especially with sports stuff. Uh, he was, uh, you know, telling me how his uh, his uh, twins were beat up at my White Sox, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm, you know, and I know I, last time I looked, the Sox were losing against the, I, I want to say they were playing against the, uh, the Angels tonight. Uh, I want to say I had looked real quickly before he hopped on and um, they were losing. I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. We had a 12 game winning streak going. And then Boston decided to throw a wedge in that uh, the other day. Well, I happen to know a guy from Boston would be very happy about that. <laughs> and you know him too. <laughs> It'll be had, um, when the... I did have one question for Matthew um, Good. that, yeah, that I remembered. Um, what microphones are you, do, you, do you use? Do you use wireless or uh, wired? You know, I was just going to bring that up too. I was going to ask the other guys uh, what they use as far as, as microphones go. I use, uh, I'm not sure of what the, exactly what the model number is, but uh, but I use Sennheiser wireless mics. Um, I wish I had written down what uh, it is that I use, but they're, they're, they're really good. Probably less about uh, two shows at the most before I got changed batteries, I think. So, yeah, I love them. I, I will but, tell uh, you that people, uh, I will tell you this, Matt, and uh, I always change up batteries out every single time. The I, I always take the batteries out at the, at the end of the event. Uh, I have like boxes <laughs> and I give the batteries away to <laughs> to people uh, or partially used batteries from either wireless uh, speaker systems or body packs or anything like that, um, microphones. Uh, the batteries from Amazon, they're very, very good. Uh, they're inexpensive. You can buy like 100 batteries for a very small price, and they last really, really well. I would definitely recommend if you're looking for a battery for a wireless microphone, um, this is something that you can buy uh, from Amazon bulk. Have the, the box, the cardboard box that comes in, in your gear, and have you know 50 batteries, 100 batteries, wherever you want to buy it. And they're very, they're very, very good. They're very inexpensive. And if you don't use the battery full 100%, you can use it in remote controls. You can use it wherever you want around your house. But if you know people who have kids, give the batteries to them. It's your use. It's a loss already. It's already, you know, right off on your taxes and your, your business. Um, it is something that is used. It's not 100%. So you're 50%, 40%, whatever it is. Just, you know, you know that way, do you know? or recycle them properly. But I will tell you that we probably go through two cases of batteries, maybe three cases of battery a year, depending on how often we're doing certain things. But with body packs for lapel microphones, handheld microphones, and uh, uh, packs for wireless speaker systems, uh, those batteries right there, I always change the battery out at the beginning and then take them out. And this way I know every single time they're not dying in the middle of a conversation with that. Uh, but also, again, like for the, the Amazon batteries, very impressed with. And I've used Duracell. I've used a lot of nicer batteries. And I definitely would say if you're looking for a battery, if you haven't done so already, try the Amazon batteries out. Uh, you might be very, very surprised and save yourself a few bucks. I've been using the uh, Energizer Recycle or Energizer Rechargeable ones um, for years. Um, I've got a recharger, so... You know, I'll uh, if they if if I notice that the uh, you know the, the microphone has a little display on it, uh, and it tells me what the battery level is. So if I'm if I'm down to like one, it, it, there's like three dots. I think is full. So if it's down to one dot at the end of the show, I'll pull the batteries out, bring them home, and charge them up, and then they're set to go for the the next gig. So that's been working for me, but so that's you... a good idea. I mean, that's that's good to know as far as the Amazon thing. So you're using Sennheiser uh, for your karaoke. Uh, Jeff, what about you? Yep. What do you use when you do karaoke for a microphone? 
I got two Shures, um, SLX or uh, yeah, SLX systems. So they're you know just the SM58 heads on them. So they they, they work. I mean, one you know one I use you know as my wireless DJ or they microphone. wireless. I'm sorry. They're wireless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah the uh, the receivers are uh, I built them into my uh, uh, my case for my controller so they're always there so I, I take them everywhere I go it's just you know it's I usually only use one uh, at the wedding I did Saturday or Sunday um, you know it was good to have two for speeches I would just hand them off so all right and let's go to cool. Mr Dixon what about you for microphone sir what do you use for uh when you do karaoke or anything if I'm doing it personally I just use my regular microphone I I don't know the name of it. I just know it's a sure. It's I went is it a BLX? It's not the Spencer one. And it's not the it's like the in between, you know. Middle middle ground ones. Yeah, but at school we have I use the I think theirs is a sure, but it's the the microphones there are expensive. So I use that when I yeah, have are wireless as well? Yep, all of them is wireless. Okay. Okay. And I I have for my main rig, I have see I use both Audio Technica and and Sennheiser. Um, even though Shore is right here in Niles, Illinois, I think which directions like that way. Uh, even though it's right here in Niles, Illinois, Shore is I'm not in Caldwell. The, yep, um, I know I know I played very well over there. Or after, not far from a, a Leaning Tower, or Y over there. Uh, I know that area very, very well. I grew up not far from there. And one of my dad's friends lives over there. He used to live over there. I don't know what he still does. My dad unfortunately passed away. But um, it's one of the things that they have good quality products. Just, I like the Sennheiser more in the Audio Technica. But I actually, on my main rig, on my XZ, I have a cable-driven uh, driven or actually wired uh, handheld Sennheiser microphone that I plugged into one of the mic inputs, and then I had the wireless in the bottom of underneath the uh, um, the XZ. But I found both the Audio Technica, the Sennheiser, and the Shure, the sound quality in all three, about equal to each other. And I know a lot of people would say SM58, great capsule, great great microphone. Um, but with karaoke, I not sure you want to spend that much money. And I know some people here use like Phoenix Pro. And I think DJ Brantley uses Phoenix Pro. Matt, do you use Phoenix Pro? Me? Be... Yeah. No way in hell would I ever touch. Sorry. <laughs> well, no way in heck would I ever touch a Phoenix Pro product. Those are the okay. worst mics you can buy. Okay. Any, I've never had an issue. Gem sound, have you? Any, any mic that is not a Sennheiser <laughs> is a bad mic. Sure mics are horrible. I would never touch a sure mic. I don't trust sure mics. I don't trust anything. Fist bumping you, buddy. If you if you trust <laughs> sure, sure SLX. Okay, I've heard that works, but you shouldn't be a company that makes stuff that doesn't work and then makes stuff that works in arenas. That just doesn't make sense to me. Like your bottom of the barrel product should still work well, and sure just makes such crummy products unless you're spending thousands of dollars and. I lost all faith in that company and switched to Sennheiser, and I don't use anything else. Are you are you picking your toenails there, uh, Matt? Yeah, you know, just <laughs> yeah, you get your foot in there. You might as well. <laughs> well I have a. I, th I think Jordan said, "Ask if you're doing the. Uh, what, what did you say? The uh, which which microphone? Yeah, you well, have never that. used Gem Sound. Those are the Gem words. Sound. <laughs> gem I've used. Sound. Uh, I had Vocal Pro. Pros. Vocal Pro. Vocal Pro. And I piled. Those. Yeah, I was going to bring those up too. I I've actually, never used those. those are, they, are they any good, or are those garbage too? Vocal Pro? No, I would not yeah. recommend them. Um, I so I, I used Vocal Pro once or twice when they sent me some free ones. They work for about like fifty to sixty. They're made really well. They're made out of heavy metal, but they work for about like sixty to seventy feet. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't like. That's my thing is. You should be able to trust your mics and not hold your breath. And I used to hold my breath during wedding ceremonies when I had a sure mic because I knew that for some reason it might just cut out. And so now I use my Sennheiser. I put it up high on top of my speaker with, you know, the, the half wave antennas. And I just sit back and take a seat and don't even have to worry about anything. And it's uh, it's and, and I live in Orange County. So my experience with mics is probably different than other people because 
we have numerous uh, Air Force bases and military bases and other venues that are, you know, in downtown LA or there's one in Long Beach. Every time I go to, I have to have a separate Sennheiser band because one of the bands just will not pick up any open channels. So uh, I'm sure it's where you are, but yeah, people know, people know my stance on share microphones if they watch my channel. You're, you're, you're not, you're <laughs> not a fan, but uh, Jordan and Taylor, you, what about you guys? The only mic I've ever had that cut out was a sure. I've bought three different shirts. Now, wired mics, shirts. I have two right here. I have a couple more. But every wireless sure mic I have ever bought, I have sold and just thought, thank you for giving me money for that because that is a piece of trash, hmm. is what I have to say about sure microphones. But uh, it depends on the gig. If you are drunk enough i will hand you a gem sound i do have them because drunk people, people smash up, microphones they, ours, they you know we, we've done I don't trust them. that are just like drops are hammered and i have a 30 dollar wireless microphone for you but normally you it, at a karaoke i would probably give you a phoenix pro um personally in uh like at weddings and stuff i usually use like a sure 58 with a wireless uh xlr um, but I do have a pair of Voco Pros that have been nothing but rock solid. I've never cut out. They've never broken. I've had them for like five years. I don't really use them anymore. I used to use them for bands. Uh, they've been rock solid, but I've used all of those brands that aren't too. I mean, some of the cheaper. Voco Jordan, Pros you want to turn up your volume a little bit on your mic? Yeah. Some of the cheaper Voco Pro stuff and Phoenix Pro stuff is, I mean, you got to be careful with that stuff. It's not name brand you're, it, you're, you use phoenix pro legitimately the only models i and i've got all of their gear like, never had an issue year. i've never had one i've never had an issue with any of their gear except well, actually i'll take that back it was one time and matt i know this is why you run into the issue in la i was down in madison and completely different market than i'm you know from lacrosse but if and uh based on channels and usage my Phoenix Pro, there was no way I could I could find a clean channel. So I went with the best one I could actually come up with in Madison. And later I found out from Bennett NFL, NLFX that depending on the market you're in, you should be using certain, you know, your mic kit should have X, Y, or Z frequency for this area and not one for this area. And had I known that, I would have brought a completely different mic set up with me to Madison. But it wasn't bad. I, it was like two little crunches in the entire thing and that was it but yeah with phoenix pro stuff i've never had an issue and when it comes to karaoke i'm using the 4000 mic set it's got eight microphones in there and it's like 300 dollars. go ahead and break you break a few of them uh i don't think there's gonna be actually somebody's tried to and they've held up but my one of my other djs had one given back to him in a pol an impolite way and yeah, it still held up, but I wouldn't go anything like their PTU 52 and their two number one and two flagships for microphones that are uh, of their gear. And those are the only ones I'm using at weddings. And when it comes to karaoke, the 5,000 or the 4,000. So if you break it, so be it. That's where I'm at. I don't want to give you a $600 microphone because... Maybe at a corporate event. Even at the weddings I DJ at, because I just don't, tr and call this my lack <laughs> of faith in humanity or trusting anyone. I'm sorry. I don't trust anybody I'm handing a microphone to, ever. I don't trust them to hold it correctly, so. <laughs> Here, if you can't listen to me for From 30 bonus. seconds, I'm going to put it. While, we're, while you're talking to people and everybody is pointing to put the mic up to your face and you still don't get it, you, I I'm not giving you a good microphone. I'm just <laughs> not. It's always funny when you see people talking and they turn their head and they go like, "Why?" and they go like this, go in and out with like, and they're like, what's wrong? You're not talking into the microphone, not moving with it. One thing also, which I would recommend you guys, anyone who does, uh, this is another recommendation for product wise, uh, and then not sponsor the show, but this is something I buy and I believe in very wholeheartedly, Microfoam. I've talked about this before. It is a product that sterilizes and cleans microphones. It's cherry smelling. It has a nice, pleasant, deodorizes the microphone. 
I use this every single time before the gig. That way it it, it, it does the microphone uh, pad will be damp a little bit. Uh, it's a foam. So you put the foam on it, you put it on the microphone, let it soak in, do it beforehand. By the time people start using it, usually it's dry. You want to let it dry for like an hour or two. Um, and then I put a little bit on afterwards, just on the tip of it, where people usually have saliva, you know, come out of their mouth. Uh, it's one of the things I also wipe down microphones with alcohol wipes. You, if you look at my, if you look at my pictures, a lot of times I post, you'll see alcohol wipes and you'll see microphone next to each other. And that is because the fact that I want to clean the microphone, get off anything off the microphone, not just germ wise, but a lot of times people have food in their hands from dinner or they have this and they grab a microphone and make a speech. Sometimes there's grease on their hands from whatever they, they touched, whatever they touched your hair, they touched something. And I want to make sure it's clean for whatever. Uh, no, I do not have stock in those companies, uh, but I do have stock of microfoam. Uh, <laughs> but those things right there, I, I I buy that in bulk because I use it. I use the product every single time. And if you're doing karaoke, um, I definitely say, you know, again, you want to keep your take care of your equipment. It doesn't matter if you buy a cheap uh, vocal pros or if you buy, you know, whatever microphones you want to use or use a good microphone, doesn't matter for a, a wedding or for a corporate gig, you still want stuff to be clean. You want to look at stuff like I always use the the wind socks, so the black foam socks. I always use those because it lessens the popping noise out of people's mouths, and they're easy to clean, and they're disposable. If you get someone's ripped or discolored, take it off, put a new one on. They're, it's cheap. You can buy them all day long. Uh, I, you know, on stage has them, you can buy a six pack of them for a few bucks, uh, through any good audio store. And it, it's, it's things like that that helps your life out, uh, and makes you look different than everyone else. And again, the popping and stuff like that is because of when people not pronouncing the P sound, they pop it and that gives that pop noise versus people who are around microphones. They know not to pop the microphone, which everyone here knows how to do that. Um, and then, uh, new, uh, new Picard or Kevin, uh, says, uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, can't find a price for trivia. Do you have a contact for DJ trivia? And I tell you, that's for you, uh, DJ Brentley. I have to look that up. It's in our portal online somewhere. If you want to send me a message, DJ Brentley at outlook.com, I'll find it for you. I contacted well, him a couple weeks ago, and he reached right out. It's a nice yeah, guy. You, they're generally pretty good about it. I mean, he was at Max, uh, and he was at one of the last Midwest DJs live, too, if I'm not mistaken. Not and uh, one, one of the ones before. And also finish up, too. Don't forget, next month here in Chicago is going to be Marquee, the Marquee Show. Uh, Casey is having that at uh, right by O'Hare Airport. Uh, a really nice hotel, not far from my stomping grounds in the city of Chicago, where I grew up at in the city, uh, and not far actually uh, from my lovely wife, who was here last week with me. Which I'm gonna, I'm trying to get her to come back on again another episode, uh, not too distant future, because it's great having her here and getting her insight on the coordination time management side, just like we had before. Uh, but if you're looking to come to Marquee, uh, if you guys want to do a uh, meetup. You guys want to do a dinner or something like that. I just need to know people who are coming and they want to do this. And I can figure out a place not far from there. A lot of great Chicago pizza places. And I'm not talking deep dish. I'm talking tavern style, which is the thin and crispy, nice, crunchy, great places to go to. Uh, not far within probably 20 minutes or so from O'Hare. Uh, no, not party at my house because I'm further than that away. And besides that, there's no alcohol here. So we won't have a party. I know a lot of you guys like to have your adult beverages, uh, but we don't have alcohol here because I can't drink. So there you go. Uh, but <laughs> if you guys are thinking about doing something like that, I'd love to hear from you guys. And I want to hear from you guys down below down there. Uh, if you guys have anything in the chat, uh, questions, comments, critiques, criticisms, or anything like that, please put it down below. Uh, also, uh, I don't know if you guys heard or not the bumpers the past uh, couple weeks coming in. For the show, uh, I'm in uh, dabbling in doing some music, 
And I got some uh, new music coming up for the next episode, for this episode here, uh, for the very, very beginning. So I want to hear your take on the music that I'm putting up there. It's not the uh, typical uh, rhythm music I have been using, uh, but it's actually had little vocals and stuff like that. And uh, I want to see what you guys think of that. And uh, yeah, Kevin, correct. Do not drink and drive. Thin and crispy, yum. Karaoke here too. Uh, there too. No, no karaoke here. <laughs> Unless they pull the old karaoke system out, which again, uh, someone wants I'll bring to buy karaoke. That. Where are we going? Let's. <laughs> I, I guess we're going by karaoke Matt's. meetup. Matt's got Matt's got to come down and bring out his karaoke stuff, so that way we have that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm fancy. I use a projector and a screen, or I'll use like two like uh led tvs or whatever for care fun but uh yeah i i don't know i my thing with karaoke is like the tricky part is when they do the setup do you want the screen like it's it's weird placement of the screen because like you want the audience to you really need two because you want the audience to see the words and sing too but you also want the singer to be able to see it but you don't want the singers back to the audience so it's always tricky with placement one of the best ones i've seen matt is actually they have the screen in front. They have the microphone on a stand so people can't grab the microphone. And then mm. in front, kind of like a monitor, they have the yeah, TV screen great. down below angled. You know, that's, doing, you know, that's too much. That's, that's too much work. And then <laughs> behind them, that. screens. That's but again, broken, it depends on what kind of step you want to do, how elaborate you want to go, how much money you want to invest into this, and what you want to charge. And uh, Matt in Minnesota... On average, I'm not asking what you get what you get paid, but on average, what do you usually see places paying for karaoke for a four hour uh, job? Here? No, no, um, Matt in Minnesota. No. Uh generally, it's probably about uh, maybe two to two fifty a night, something like that. But uh, my Saturday one pays me even more than that. So okay, so on average, two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars. So that's one of the things you want to think about. If you're going to do something like that, you're charging $300 for a gig to go out there and do that. It doesn't matter if it's uh, like uh, Kevin's asking for trivia or if it's anything like that. The money you invest in it, it takes so many times getting money back to for your initial investment. You have the software, you have music, you have your equipment, be it speakers, be it whatever. And if you're going to buy additional monitors, and again, TVs, you can go to Walmart and buy you know, a 32 inch monitor and have a 32 inch monitor facing the singer, um, you know, a mic stand, you can get off of Amazon if you really want to be cheap or you get, you know, a non-stage basic stand, 30, 40 bucks, you know, at, at, on, online or a guitar center or whatever. Um, and then, you know, you're looking at a HDMI splitter, which you can, again, Amazon, you can get from the electronic store that takes one HDMI in, and you split it to two sources so you can have it onto a TV or onto a projector and onto that monitor in front of someone. And as far as putting a TV up, you could buy small platforms. Again, Amazon, a lot of these stores have it. There's stores that sell karaoke stuff that you could you could mount a small TV on for people to see and then have your TV up high. And you have to look at all the money you invest in it. It's going to take some time to get back your investment. So if you're looking at $200, $300, 250 Per gig, that's why Matt has three gigs, four gigs a week. So that way he has income coming in to help pay for that. And again, it's also your time. What is your time and effort worth? And every market's different. I'm not saying you have to get paid this. If you're in a small market, kind of like lacrosse, they may only pay $150 or, or $200. Or you may go to a big market like LA, they may pay you $500. But whatever that fee is, you're going to invest money into your equipment, microphones, cleaning stuff, whatever you do, make sure you're making a good amount of money afterwards and negotiate with the bar. Even you go in cheaply when you talk to the bar manager and you say, hey, okay, right now I'll do it for 200 for a couple of nights to see how it works. And you are seeing they're making good money, they're busy. Make sure you talk to the bar owner or manager and say, hey, you know what? I see that you're busier now with me here. You should you know, pay me what I'm worth. You know, it's, it's cost me money to do this. I'd like to be... 300, 350, 400, whatever it is, you negotiate with them. Don't twist your arm too hard because they'll say, oh, yeah, goodbye. I'll get something else cheaper. Yeah. There's always something cheaper. But the thing is that there's only one of you out there and you have to sell them on you and your expertise. And that's why, you know, being in here with everyone here, 
with Jeff, with Dwayne, with Matt from California, Matt from Minnesota, Taylor Jordan, Tommy, who unfortunately is not here tonight, Brentley, myself. We all try to give information to help you guys and try to help you uh, give you stuff to make your business better. And that's what we're here for to help you out and make sure that you have fun at your job. Uh, wow. With that said, um, <laughs> oh, God, what was I going to say? Uh, with that said, it is already time to end the show. I want to thank you all for coming in here tonight. Matt, thank you so much. Well, Matt from Minnesota. I got to make sure I do that. Matt from Minnesota, thank you so much for coming in here tonight. Make sure uh, that I hope you come back here again, um, especially with it. And uh, maybe you'll try a new software out and uh, tell us how that is next time you come in. Uh, other than that, I appreciate you all out there for watching. And thank you all. And the subscribers, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Uh I got some other plans coming up. I'm trying to see about doing a couple other things and have some more guests on in the not too distant future. Other than that, I appreciate you and I appreciate everything you do. So tonight I'm going to ask, actually ask Taylor to take us out tonight uh, because I've had Jordan do it before. Now I get the, the boss to do it. <laughs> yeah, the boss. Well, <laughs> thanks. That's what to tell anyone. Yeah, you can't tell everybody. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. See you guys later. <laughs> you guys all enjoy yourself. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>